Hey there, boss fighters! With our brand new addition to the excellent Bucky O'Hare action figure line, Bruiser the Beetlejuicean Berserker Baboon, we thought it would be fun to delve into his character with a special sentient protoplasm against colonial encroachment bio. I'm Bruiser, and for the next 48 hours, you're gonna eat, sleep, and breathe Berserk! Bruiser is a Berserker Baboon from the planet Beetlejuicier, not to be confused with a certain Michael Keaton blockbuster movie, or the tenth brightest star in the night sky, and after Rigel, which also gets a name drop in the Bucky O'Hare comic as Rigel 7, the second brightest in the constellation of Orion. Beetlejuice in the Anniverse, however, is a planet inhabited by a race of anthropomorphic simian creatures called Berserker Baboons, and the very race that birthed the brothers Bruce and Bruiser. To give him his full title, he is a sergeant in the United Animal Space Marine Heavy Assault Brigade and chief engineer on the SPACE frigate The Righteous Indignation. Now in the continuity comics, Bruiser doesn't appear at all, but we do get his brother Bruce for a short time before he is vaporised by the damaged photon accelerator on The Righteous Indignation. Boy, Larry Hammer sure did like to make me pick up a dictionary a lot when I was a kid, and I really appreciate that. There was no indication that Bruce was actually alive in the comics, as we didn't get much further in that run. However, the UK comics published by DC Thompson in 1992 went much further to 20 issues no less, and stayed much closer to the television series timeline, which of course had Bruce sucked into another dimension. Bruiser appeared regularly in the comic, and of course in the TV series, coming aboard the Righteous Indignation not long after his brother had been vanquished into another realm of time and space. Bruiser, voiced by Dale Wilson, featured heavily in two specific episodes, the eighth ep titled The Search for Bruce, where the lost brother, also voiced by Dale Wilson, returns in spectral form to help his colleagues, but also to explain that he was sent to the other side of the Anniverse, and when he built a transporter to send him back, a similar toad-built device caused it to malfunction, keeping him stuck between worlds. When Bucky and the crew attacked the Toad's base, it was left to Bruiser to destroy the Toad's transporter, which in turn made his brother disappear again and return to his previous planet on the other side of the Anniverse. Bruiser responded exactly as you'd expect him to. The second major episode for Bruiser was number 12, Bye Bye Berserker Baboon. This one focused on the Toad's crippling fear of the creatures and led to an invention by Toadborg of special goggles for the Toad Stormtroopers to wear that altered the reality of what they were looking at and in the case of the baboons made them look harmless and cute. Around the same time, the crew of the Righteous Indignation travelled to Bruiser's homeworld so that he could attend a medal ceremony and be awarded the Bronze Banana Medal of Valor for his outstanding heroic effort in the Toad Wars. In this episode, we get to see Bruiser's family and it is a nice insight into what up to this point hadn't been explored in much depth at all. While they were on the planet, the General approached Bruiser to ask if he could help train the new recruits and Bruiser accepted with glee. Most of that training consisted of perfecting the battle cry of <laughs> Unbeknownst to anyone else and with their new goggle inventions in tow, the Toads invaded the planet of Beetlejuicier and took Bruiser, Willy and the recruits prisoner. As the Toads took over, Bucky and the crew led the inhabitants to fight back. Toadborg retaliated by releasing the terrifying Terror Toad and the giant monster ran riot causing all sorts of damage. Bruiser, Willy and the recruits escaped the Toads prison and worked out that the goggles were the reason behind the Toads newfound and rather uncharacteristic bravery. Willy devised a weapon using all of the equipment they had at their disposal which reversed the polarity of the goggles making them useless to the Toads. With the Terror Toad on the rampage, Bucky escaped leaving everyone to fend for themselves, much to the chagrin of the baboons. In his absence, Willy used the weapon he created against the Toads and their crippling fear immediately returned and lo and behold, Bucky came back with jars of bugs collected from a nearby planet, with the express purpose of drawing the Terror Toad to the retreating Toad's tractor beam back up to their mothership. The Terror Toad was left to run riot within the Toad ship as they struggled to get him back in his cage, with everything else returning back to normal for those on the ground. Berserker baboons, yeah! In 1990, Hasbro released the first Bruiser action figure in their Bucky line with his Beetlejuicy and Laser Bazooka, but was desperately shortchanged in the computer game department. He wasn't featured at all in the 92 Konami NES release, and turned up in a few cutscenes in the arcade game also made by Konami, neither of which had Bruiser as a playable character. A missed opportunity for sure. He was also absent from the Konami handheld LCD game, but you can only fit so much on one of those. 
Bruiser is surprisingly more intelligent than most give him credit for, and despite his overall demeanour, when it comes to his family, friends, fellow soldiers, crew and even other species in need, he is remarkably compassionate and loving. His protective nature comes out when the crew are in danger, but never more so than when his dear friend and engineer companion Blinky is in trouble. He plays on the fears that the Toad Empire has for his kind, and understandably shows little to no sympathy for the Toad species as a whole. His brother Bruce has similar traits, but you always feel as though Bruiser is trying to live up to his missing sibling, and of course, misses him greatly, as we saw in the 8th episode of the cartoon. Clearly there is more to Bruiser than just raw power and strength, but that ability to terrify Toads without doing much at all, as well as becoming an unstoppable battering ram on command, makes for a formidable opponent and a great option for the crew to have when trouble is staring them directly in the face. Are you This awesome character has been immortalised in the Boss Fight Studio Bucky O'Hare range, and you can get him right now at bossfightshop.com. Don't miss out on this chance to get arguably SPACE's most effective weapon against the Toad Menace, Bruiser the Beetlejuice Berserker Battle!